Well, good morning, good people. Good morning. And how are we doing today? Well, I'm glad to hear that, folks. I'm going to welcome you to worship here at Quaker Town United Methodist Church. My name, of course, is Pastor Rick, and it's good to have you with us. Let us enter into worship today. One other person I need to introduce, because we have three people up here today, lucky all of you. So, of course, we have Tammy Swearingen, who is our lay reader for today. But in addition, you may have read it in our September newsletter, we do have a brand new seminary intern who's with us from Moravian Seminary, Mr. Stephen Whitehead. He'll be with us in worship. And so I'm going to turn things over to Stephen. The floor is all yours. Good morning. Please join me now in the call to worship. O come, sing to the Lord. Make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. We come, seeking a spirit of wisdom and revelation. Come into God's presence with thanksgiving. We come, seeking enlightenment for the eyes of our hearts. Come, make a joyful noise with songs of praise. We come, seeking the immeasurable greatness of God's power. We come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. Amen. The opening hymn will be Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee, number 89 in the United Methodist Hymnal. Um, please stand as you're able. Thanks be to God, friends. Please be seated. Now at this time, friends, we have a very special prayer because it blesses all of our folks who are students, our teachers, our Sunday school teachers, you name it. For today, again, we celebrate this great thing that is teaching, of being a student, whether we are students of God, students in the classrooms, teachers of classrooms, you name it. So, 
Friends, as we offer up this prayer today, let us do so and bless all of those that are part of our education. So please join me in today's response of prayer. Let's pray together. Author and finisher of our faith, we gather with ceaseless praise for all you have given to us. Pour out a spirit of wisdom and revelation on your people, especially upon our teachers. Be with our teachers as they greet a new day of instruction. Bless their minds as they impact knowledge and wisdom to their students. May their efforts raise up those who enter their classroom. On this United Methodist Student Sunday, we ask for your special blessing upon the students of this congregation, Faith Preschool, and more. We especially ask your blessing for those we name before you now. Giver of every good thing, bless students everywhere that they and us can come and learn. Let us use their newfound knowledge and wisdom to better our church, community, and world to your glory and honor. Encourage our teachers and students and bless them in their studies and work. Enlighten the eyes of our hearts to experience your powerful hope among us. Fill us with a deeper understanding of the greatness of your love and power. We gather as your church and pray in the name above all names. Amen. So friends, at this time, indeed we celebrate what is United Methodist Students Sunday. A time where we recognize and bless our United Methodist students and think about some of the challenges that come before them. Today's special offering will be going to provide scholarships for our United Methodist students across our world. Brothers and sisters, please join me in that prayer as I offer up a blessing upon this offering today. Lord and Father, we do think about our students, Lord. Are those seated in these pews right now, those at home, those from across our great world that are making themselves better, Lord, by submitting themselves to the instruction of their teachers that seek what to better themselves and what they learn, and putting into practice, Lord, in your service to this world. So help, Lord, and bless this offering, that it will go forth, Lord, and provide not just funds, but the hope, Lord, that God's people are behind them, and that indeed, Lord, we go with them to be students of your heavenly kingdom. All this we ask in Jesus' name, and all God's people said, Amen. 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 This time, we'll place this offering up here on the altar. If our kids want to gather for this morning, so show this moment. Come along. Good morning, friends. Good morning. Grab a seat up here on the steps. We're going to talk for a quick minute. That's a good. That's a good seat, Betsy. All right. So, how are we doing today? We're well, good. I'm glad to hear. So, you guys are at school. Are you excited to be back in school? No. It's okay. <laughs> hey, we're all about honesty in the church of God, okay? Okay. Now, I, even if you're not excited, I know you're learning a lot of stuff, right? So let's think, what's one thing you're hoping to learn about, Thomas, in, your, in any of your classes this year? What's one thing you hope to come out end of this year with no. More math. That's been a popular answer this morning. We had a couple of our guys say and science, because there's some really cool science experiments, right? How about you guys down there? Anything you want to learn? I know. Uh, I want to learn uh, math. math. Math is popular. All the math teachers out there, you're in luck this year. You got people that want to learn. That's awesome. So, as part of that, and in, in light of what we've been talking about already in service and what we'll keep talking about as we get the scripture readings and everything else, is kind of the great hope that drives all this. Because, you know, times like you were saying, you weren't exactly thrilled about school starting up. Summer was really nice, and it was nice to be able to wake up if you wanted to and enjoy you know, hot summer days and all that. But we also have a lot of hope as we head into this year. And you may have seen out in the narthex a really neat display that some of our big preschool teachers have set up for their students as well as for our Sunday school students. And that has to do with these. Betsy, you know what shape this is, buddy? What? A star. A star. And so we're, you know, kind of like when you wish upon a star, we're writing some of our wishes for all of you. And so this is an activity that anybody you're welcome to do. There's plenty of out there. I just happen to grab the hot pink sticky pad, but there's all types of colors out there. So pick the fancy, but we're lining up our hopes for all of you guys and writing down, you know, 
I wrote down thinking of you know my oldest daughter Ella that I hope she makes a lot of friends in kindergarten. And for Cora, you know, even though she's just going on too, you know, and isn't quite in the classroom yet, you know, my hope for her is that she, you know, gets to have lots of fun and learn some new skills to the play she does. So we're putting these down, and you know, part of what I'll do is I'm gonna write a little hope for each of you guys as we leave here. Because as a church, we're all about not only learning about God together, but also supporting each other wherever we are at that stage of the journey. So there's a lot of hope for you guys, whether it's learning math, whether it's learning our you know, different shapes and all types of things. You know, in English, it's a lot of fun. And you have a lot of people that are behind you because we're all still learning great things about God too. Hence why we're celebrating Sunday school and all the work that students do today. So with that, I'll get you guys your notes for it. And then we're going to do our little echo for it. And so we'll do that real quick and let you guys return to your seats. All you got to do is just repeat it for me as we pray. Congregation, you are always welcome to join us in this, so let's pray together. We'll start with, Dear God, Dear God, thank you for today. Thank you for today. today. For all the ways, for all the ways that you teach us. That you teach us. So please bless our teachers. So please bless our teachers. And us. And us. As we learn from you. As we learn from you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. So I'm going to tell you, you can head on up, but just wait a second while I write your notes. And then let you get back to your views and continue on with our service today. All right. And friends, now I invite you to a different style of prayer as we lift up today's pastoral prayer and Lord's Prayer together. So friends, I'll call your attention to the back of our white insert and announcements. It has our current prayer list. And so you'll see listed there folks that we're lifting up for healing mercies, our homebound folks, those members of our church or family of our church that are in law enforcement and serving in the military. Lifting up our missionaries to take the word of God well beyond our community and those folks who have something that we are always going to be in prayer for listed there. Brothers and sisters, please join me in an attitude of prayer as we lift up the prayers of the people and then join me together in the Lord's Prayer thereafter. Oh, Heavenly Father, we come before you now grateful that you hear our prayers. And so, Lord, having heard all of our highs and lows, our joys and concerns, our prayers and petitions, Lord, hear the prayers of your people. Father, we always begin by asking for healing mercies for ourselves and those we love. And today, Lord, we do much the same. We lift up Elaine ahead of Thursday's appointment to determine when her surgery will be. We continue to pray for Barry Clymer as he heals, for Barry and Bill, Marie Frankenfield's sons, as they recover from their ailments, for Donna Harvey, Molly Minerick, and Mr. Purcell, as well as Joanne as she recovers from the last bits of this pneumonia. Lord, be with all of these and more. Help heal and bring them to better health, Lord, according to your will. Father, we also lift up a different type of mercy we ask for upon the swear engines. We pray, Lord, traveling mercies for Tammy's son and his family as they travel up and begin their move from Utah. So, Lord, bless and keep them. Keep them safe, Lord, amid their travels so that they can delight, Lord, in where their journey leads them and the great joy they'll have when they arrive. Lord, we also want to lift up, Lord, those that take the word of God well beyond our community. So we want to lift up our missionaries, Lord, for all the great work that they do. We continue to lift up Dan and Peaches as they continue the ministry at Jerusalem House in Allentown. We lift up Dr. Belinda Forbes, Eliberto, and Molly as they, Lord, bring the gospel to lands afar, Lord, beyond just the United States. So, Lord, bless and keep them. Continue to strengthen their faith, Lord, that they will bring it to people that are, Lord, you have been working on hearts and minds to receive this good news. Lord, we also want to say a great thank you for the joys we celebrate today, a successful chicken barbecue, Stephen joining us, Lord, as our new seminary intern, for the Thatchers in celebrating their 43rd wedding anniversary. For Joyce, not only getting back from the hospital, but celebrating her and her husband's 33rd wedding anniversary. Lord, for all of these joys and so much more, we give you thanks in the mighty name of Jesus, who taught us to pray like this. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, friends, at this time, I'd like you to join me in singing our hymn of reflection, which is 
Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. It's found on page 384 of the United Methodist Hymnal. And as it is the hymn of reflection, we invite you to remain seated as we sing. Thanks be to God. And now, friends, we turn our attention to the celebration of our offering. We think about how God has been so good to us and give back to continue the mission work in his holy name. So once more, our ushering team will be coming by. If you have an offering to make, we invite you to place it in there. Please also note, inside each of your pews is an orange laminated card. If you are an online giver, we invite you to take that and place it into the plate, signifying your gifts as we dedicate all these to God's holy service. Ushers, if you would please help us.
join me in the prayer of dedication. Holy One, we present our gifts with thanksgiving for all you have given to us. Bless them and multiply them as they provide opportunities for education. Bless the students as they pursue their dreams. Give them a spirit of wisdom and revelation to grow in understanding of your great love for them. Guide them to use their knowledge and skills to serve others, to work towards justice and equality, and to contribute to the common good. As our gifts come together with those of other United Methodist churches, remind us all of your love and power. Thank you for the communities of faith that offer nourishment and support. Receive these gifts in the name above all names, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now the choir will bless us with lead, and I will follow.
was lovely. Could you please join me in the prayer for illumination? Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. One of today's scriptures is found in Psalm 32, which is on page 479 in your pew Bible. The joy of forgiveness. Happy are those whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Happy are those to whom the Lord imputes no iniquity, and whose spirit there is no deceit. While I kept silent, my body wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night, your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was dried up as by the heat of summer. Selah. Then I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not hide my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Selah. Therefore, let all who are faithful offer prayer to you, at a time of distress, the rush of mighty waters shall not reach them. You are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with glad cries of deliverance. Selah. I will instruct you and teach you the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Do not be like a horse or a mule without understanding, whose temper must be curbed with bit and bridle, else it will not stay near you. Many are the torments of the wicked, but steadfast love surrounds those who trust in the Lord. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, O righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. Thank you, Tammy. My friends, our New Testament lesson today comes from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. The first chapter, verses 15 to 23, where we find the Apostle's words, a specific prayer he lifts up the Ephesians today. Let us hear what the Apostle has to say. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks to you as I remember you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may perceive what is the hope for which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the workings of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet, and has made him head over all things for the church, which is his body, to the fullness of him who fills all in all. Friends, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I had a new first church just two weeks ago when my oldest daughter, Ella, started kindergarten. I know, I know, hard to believe. Tim and I barely could understand. It's like, wait a second, yesterday weren't you like one? Okay, <laughs> most parents understand. Yeah. And she went to kindergarten, came back, as, and was very excited that she had a good day, had a great time with her teacher and classmates, and she was all the more excited because it was over. Kindergarten was finished, right? on the first grade tomorrow. So, with that, the rude awakening when we told her, well, no, honey, you go to school tomorrow, too, and the next day until the school year is finished. For better or for worse, that's the life of being a student. You have years of education to learn a myriad of things and skills to help prepare you for life thereafter. 
And friends, it is not so untrue for us as well. As the people of God, we make a profound statement in being students of the Lord our entire lives. Not a person here has a degree in the Lord God Almighty. We know everything God has ever done, ever will do, and ever, you know, could do in this very moment. Understand all the divine mysteries of the Lord God Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth. None of us have that degree, and none of us will ever achieve it. For thousands of years, God's people have studied together, have read the Bible, cover to cover, over and over and over again, but still come out with new insights upon what God wants them to do in the here and now to His glory and honor. And so it is good for us, our fellow students in the Lord, to submit ourselves to the Lord, to free ourselves from the burdens that block us from deeper understanding. To truly take God up on the offer to dive deep into his love and power and grace for us. So that we can turn around and invite others to explore for themselves. So friends, let's dive into God's word and see what he has in store for us today. Now friends, as you probably know, David wrote many songs. This was, again, one of his skills as a young man who played the harp. He was gifted in music, and so it made sense that even as a king, this was one of the ways he effectively would communicate his belief in God. And here in this 32nd Psalm, we have a wonderful instance of David expressing how he felt weighed down and found a way in God to be lifted and free. In the opening verses of this 32nd Psalm, David describes the, the feeling of being under sin's power, like he was pressed down by God's hand, or dried up like in the midst of summer. He feels this in his being. I think that many of us can relate when we're in the midst of sin, we really do feel a disconnect and a deep power over us. But David passes along something in this song. In verse 5, he begins to communicate that when he acknowledged his sin to you, O God, did not hide my iniquity, that I confessed my transgressions, you forgave me of my sin. And now the psalm takes a very different tone as it celebrates this freedom. In God, that he is freed from his sin and can move and act and sing and praise God in ways that he couldn't before. And friends, this is kind of the beginning for us. If we're truly going to say, God, I want you to teach me, well, it takes that simple truth of, you know, we have to acknowledge we don't know it all. And I get that. That's tough because at different stages in our lives, don't we know it all, right? Like at five, we know it all. At 13, we definitely. And into adulthood, we still have those moments, though it varies age to age. But the humility to say, God, I don't know. Lord, I need to repent of some things. I need to confess some things to you, God. I need to get this off my chest because this is currently a stumbling block for me and I can't move past it until I do. And the hopeful thing about this church is we hear echoed over and over and over again in countless scriptures, including this one, that the hope beyond it is that God is there ready to forgive, and the reality after forgiveness is a whole lot more freeing than when we're stuck with the power of sin. And we're invited to that. We're invited by King David, we're invited by Jesus Christ as he proclaimed the gospel on earth. We were invited by the apostles that would proclaim it in the early stages of the church developing. We hear it in the words of the Apostle Paul over and over and over again. The servants of God echo that. Please confess your sin and be free through God's forgiveness. And so if that helps us get past the initial block, that if I want to learn something from God, if we as a church want to be students of the Lord God Almighty, we begin by that acknowledgement. Lord, I'm not doing it all right, and I need your help. And if we make that first step, oh friends, what comes thereafter is wild indeed. The Apostle Paul in his letter to the Ephesians included many things. But here in this opening introduction and celebration, he includes a prayer for Beth. 
Again, this is important to know that in each time Paul would pen a letter to a specific community of faith, he had intention in mind. And so here, very celebratory as we enter verse 15, as he says, he gives thanks for them in his prayers, for their love of God and of the fellow saints that would follow him. And then he begins to unpack truly what they could experience. Now, maybe you heard it in how I read it and delivered it this morning, but if you were following along in the reading, you know that Paul never likes to end his sentences. It's just one really, really, really long thought with a lot of commas, even some semicolons that we've added in. It's a lot of different thoughts, but Paul has a lot to express. And truly, friends, I think that encapsulates what he's trying to say. That there is so much that we can explore with God. Just in verse 18 alone, Paul writes, he wants us to experience this so that with the eyes of your hearts and lightness, you may perceive what is the hope that you've been called to, the riches of God's glorious inheritance among the saints, the immeasurable greatness of his power for those that believe, and his great power working with us. Four things, just Paul just casually names, that are all worthy of their own serving and study individually, but surely, church, how wonderful that you serve a God who you could explore even just that much, right? That truly, after we've been forgiven, we say, okay, what's next, God? What will you teach me? They'll have the eyes of your heart in mind. Now, that's difficult for us to unpack, right? Because usually when we talk about our sight, it's up here, and our hearts are here pumping in our chest. We don't think about sight coming from the heart. We think of emotions coming from the heart. But let's think about some of our missions that are guided by the heart, that help us see the world a little differently. Again, friends, we just wrapped up a chicken barbecue. And let me tell you, there was a lot of neat things to see. But you also see it because you feel it as well. When people who haven't seen each other probably for the whole year say, you know what, we'll make that chicken barbecue, our excuse to come, get a good meal, and sit down and eat it together. That's not lost on our missions team, by the way. They know that that's why we still offer a chance to eat here in Miller Hall, because some people, this is the place. This is the place to gather. And that's fine. We'll be the excuse, right? What be the excuse? Okay, fine. You want to come and be here? That's fine. Enjoy the time with your friends. You don't get to sleep. That is something from the eyes of an enlightened heart that sees the missional purpose beyond just making some funds to support the missionaries and other missional efforts of this church. It also sees the ministry done while it's happening. But altogether, it's there and it comes from a place of seeing things differently with God's help. It's not just about dollar signs and about portion control, but truly about how we can serve in a greater way. Paul then invites the Ephesians and all that were reading his letters to understand just how vast God is. To see the power that would be at work in them. And Paul knows firsthand he's had that transformative experience, going from the man he was to the apostle that we're reading. And says, this is what you can explore too. The purpose and call God has for your life. Explore it. Because now that we're not bur burdened down by sin, crushing us down and not letting us see this, now, friends, as students of God, we can say, show me where you're going to take me. And that's a wild ride, friends. Because most of the time, we only get about this much of a glimpse to say, well, let's see a little bit. Man, the places God can take us. And so Paul invites the early believers, amid giving thanks for them for their love of God, their love for each other, and all the saints to say, explore it. Explore where God can take you. Explore God's power at work within you. Explore just how deep God's love is for you and for all. Feel the transformative power of Christ working within you. But harkening back to David, friends, because now we've come full circle. We've gotten rid of the obstacle that stops us from being taught. If we begin to see the possibilities of what we, where we could go and what God can teach us, well, then it puts us in an interesting spot to teach. 
You may have not seen it as readily as I did, but when King David celebrates his forgiveness, he moves on just a few verses later, starting in verse 8, wanting to tell the people what to do. See, David's so excited about this forgiveness, this transformation, that he, he can't help but kind of proclaim this. And in a voice akin to the prophets of old, he tells them either on behalf of God or as someone that's standing there in a position of authority that can address the people, that I will instruct and teach you the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. So whether David's saying that as the king of Israel, or saying, on behalf of God, he wants you to know he'll counsel you in the way you want to go, guide your steps to where you want to be. David needs to convey that. You see where we're going, friends? Sometimes many of us will dismiss ourselves and say, listen, I'm not one of those teachers, Pastor. You know, don't, please don't ask me to be a Sunday school teacher, Pastor. That, that's not my thing, but so many of us have an important lesson to teach. For David, it was the experience of being transformed. That for him, he said, I've been forgiven, let me tell you how to do that as well. And that changed the lives because thousands of years later, we're still reading it and celebrating it in our worship services. What it means to be a forgiven and changed people. And he just took the liberty to say, let me offer that up to my Hebrew brothers and sisters in his age. And still to this day, the people of God are receiving it over and over again. So, after we've had a, a transformative moment with God, after we've said, okay, Lord, teach me, don't be surprised when it's like, hey, you should pass that along. Don't just say, well, that's my nice little reality. I, I know God to be forgiving. I know God, God to be gracious. I know God to bless me abundantly. Tell people about that. Maybe you're sitting next to someone who has done the work, but they're just waiting for that message to come through clearly. Say, hey, this is the God we serve who can do this for you. This is the God who's able to provide such great and powerful things for you, and you're meant to tell somebody in a way that they'll understand it. Because now it's not coming from a place written by somebody thousands of years ago, but from somebody they don't know. It's coming from you. Their friend, their neighbor, their second or third cousin, their co-worker. They'll hear it from you because they say, all right, I know Rick. I know who he is. I'll hear his life experience. So friends, not only do we want to be good students of God, and not because we've mastered it, but because God calls us to go out and tell people, we become some teachers as well. And as uncomfortable as we wrestle with that reality internally, with all the butterflies that typically accompany teaching in our stomachs, go and tell someone about your experience let them know the wild places the Lord has taken you and you know will take you again. So that they too may experience this great thing, a journey of faith, a transformative place of being forgiven. And still to come back and learn some more. Let us go on this together and be students of the Lord for the rest of our days, good church. And thanks be to God. Amen. The closing hymn will be uh, number 577 in the United Methodist hymnal, God of Grace and God of Glory. And uh, please stand as you're able.
My friends, my thanks to each and every one of you for joining us in this time of gathered worship. And before we say goodbye for now, please go forth with this blessing. Heavenly Father, bless each and every one of my brothers and sisters gathered here, my fellow students, Lord, who are learning from you. Help us, Lord, as we leave this place to continue, Lord, to hear your voice this week, to, Lord, act upon what we have heard. And, Lord, help bring some change into this world that is ready for it. For this we ask in the precious and holy name of Jesus and all God's people said, Amen. Go in peace, church.